welcome my dear learners for this course on tribology so far we have discussed the general analysis of idealized full journal bearing and also we have discussed the significance of sommerfeld number or bearing characteristic number in today's lecture let us move ahead and solve numerical problems on idealized full journal bearing the problem number 1 of our discussion on idealized full journal bearing states that determine the load carrying capacity frictional force coefficient of friction and power loss due to friction for an ideal full journal bearing having following specification diameter of journal 5 cm length of the bearing 6.5 cm speed of the journal 1200 rpm radial clearance 0.0025 cm average viscosity 1.6 into 10 to the power of minus 6 reynolds attitude 0.8 so if i list out the data given for problem number 1 determine the load carrying capacity w frictional force f mu coefficient of friction mu and power loss for the full journal bearing having the specification journal diameter is specified which is 5 cm which is nothing but 0.05 meters length of the bearing is specified as 6.5 cm which is nothing but 0.065 meters speed of the journal capital n is 1200 rpm radial clearance capital c is 0.0025 cm and average viscosity in Reynolds. So viscosity in Reynolds is denoted by mu naught, which is 1.6 into 10 to the power of minus 6 Reynolds, and attitude or eccentricity ratio is 0.8. So this is the given data for us. Let us solve this problem. If we move for solution. we have the dimensions like diameter length in terms of meters but the careful observation reveals that he has specified the absolute viscosity in terms of reynolds but i should express this in terms of pascal second so therefore referring to our data and book written by k lingaya we are using volume 2 8 edition referring to chapter number 24 we have the conversion relation from reynolds to pascal second that is if i look at equation number Twenty-four point five y. So, referring to equation from equation twenty-four point five y, page number twenty-four point four of our data handbook, we have the correlation between Reynolds and Pascal second as mu naught is equal to. 1.45 into 10 to the power of minus 4 eta. So this is the relation what we have, where eta is in pascal second. Hence, if I substitute and solve, we have Reynolds as 1.6 into 10 to the power of minus 6. This is equal to 1.45 into 10 to the power of minus 4 eta. Hence. I'll get absolute viscosity in pascal second as 1.6 into 10 to the power of minus 6 divided by 1.45 into 10 to the power of minus 4, which is turning out to be 0.011 pascals second. 0.011 pascal second let me verify once again it is 1.6 10 to the power of minus 6 divided by 1.45 to 10 to the power of minus 4 yes it is correct 0.011 pascal second now we know the value of diametral clearance that is 0.0025 cm 
sorry, I specified it as radial clearance, right? So radial clearance is CR. I'm sorry, it is radial clearance. So small CR. It is radial clearance, 0 0.0025 centimeters. We know the relation between radial clearance and diametrial clearance. Diametrial clearance capital C is equal to 2 times the radial clearance. Right. So therefore, I'll get the diametrial clearance as 2 times 0 0.0025, which is 5 into 10 power minus 3, 5 into 10 to the power of minus 3 centimeters is the value of diametrial clearance. Hence, we know the diametrial clearance ratio Z is diametrial clearance divided by diameter. That is 5 into 10 to the power of minus 3 divided by 5. I am substituting both the values in centimeters. So, I will get the answer as 1 into 10 power minus 3. That is 10 to the power of minus 3 is the diametrial clearance ratio. This equation for diametrial clearance ratio xi is given by equation 24.29 of our data handbook. Refer page number 24.12. So, referring to our data and book equation 24.29, we have diametrial clearance ratio defined as diametrial clearance by diameter, journal diameter. So, we know all the values. Now, recollecting the equations which we have discussed in the introductory lecture to idealized full journal bearing, we can determine the quantities of interest, what he has asked. The first quantity of interest is load carrying capacity, that is W which is given by eta u l by z square times 12 pi epsilon divided by 2 plus epsilon square into root of 1 minus epsilon square. This is equation 24.38 referring to page 24.15. This is a load corresponding to minimum fluid film thickness that is called load carrying capacity. If I substitute and solve, I will get the load carrying capacity W as eta is 0 0.011. Velocity is pi dn by 60, that is pi into diameter is 0 0.05 into n dash, let me directly substitute n dash, that is 1200 by 60, pi d n dash into length is 0 0.065, whole divided by z square, z is 10 power minus 3 it is 10 power minus 3 whole square times 12 into pi into eccentricity ratio is 0 0.8 given divided by 2 plus 0 0.8 square into root of 1 minus 0 0.8 square if I solve I will get the load carrying capacity as W that is load carrying capacity is equal to 42,768.29 newtons which is equal to 42.768 kilo newtons. Now moving for second one that is frictional force before moving ahead for frictional force let us check whether this bearing is lightly loaded or not 
we can determine whether the bearing is lightly loaded or heavily loaded depending on the value of Sommerfeld number. So therefore, if I get the value of Sommerfeld number or bearing characteristic number less than 0.15, then the bearing is said to be heavily loaded bearing. If I get the Sommerfeld number or bearing characteristic number greater than 0.15, then the bearing is said to be lightly loaded bearing. Let, let, let us find the bearing characteristic number or Sommerfeld number which is given by eta n dash by p eta n dash by p times 1 by z square this is equation number 24.39 equation 24.39 referring to page 24.15 we know the value of P, P is W by LD that is load divided by projected area is the bearing pressure, P is equal to W by LD. So we know load that is 42,768.29 divided by length of the bearing is 0 0.065 into diameter diameter is 0 0.05 which is 13159473 pascals One three one five nine four seven three point eight five pascals. So we got the value of P. So if I substitute and solve, I'll get the answer as eta is zero point zero double one pascal second into n dash is thousand two hundred by sixty into pressure is one three one five nine four seven three point eight five times one by z square z is 10 power minus 3 so that is 10 power minus 6 I am getting the value of Sommerfeld number S yes, as 0 0.0167 0 0.0167 is less than 0 0.15 therefore the bearing is heavily loaded So this is a heavily loaded bearing. Now we can also calculate the value of Sommerfeld number by using alternate equation that is 24.41 where Sommerfeld number is a function of attitude only or it is a function of eccentricity ratio only. Now moving ahead to find the frictional force F mu. F mu for heavily loaded bearing is given by 4 pi square eta n dash ld times 1 plus 2 epsilon square divided by z into 2 plus epsilon square root of 1 minus epsilon square this is equation number 24.44 24 referring to page 24.17 now we know all the values if I substitute and solve I will get F mu as 4 into pi square into eta is 0 0.011 into n dash is 1200 by 60 into length is 0 0.05 into diameter is 0 0.065 ld into 1 plus 2 into 0 0.8 square divided by z is 10 power minus 3 times 2 
प्लस जीरो पॉइंट एट स्क्वायर इनटू रूट ऑफ वन माइनस जीरो पॉइंट एट स्क्वायर इफ आई सॉल्व आई गेट द फ्रिक्शनल फोर्स एस फोर्टी पॉइंट सिक्स थ्री फोर्टी पॉइंट सिक्स थ्री न्यूटन्स आई एम गेटिंग द फ्रिक्शनल फोर्स एस फोर्टी पॉइंट सिक्स थ्री न्यूटन्स नेक्स्ट इफ आई फाइंड द कोफिशेंट ऑफ फ्रिक्शन कोफिशेंट ऑफ फ्रिक्शन फॉर एवली लोडेड बियरिंग इज गिवन बाई म्यू इज इक्वल टू जई टाइम्स वन प्लस टू एप्सलॉन स्क्वायर वन प्लस टू एप्सलॉन स्क्वायर डिवाइड बाई थ्री एप्सलॉन दिस इज इक्वेशन नंबर ट्वेंटी फोर पॉइंट फोर So if I substitute all the values and solve, I'll get the solution as z is 10 to the power minus 3 times 1 plus 2 into 0.8 square divided by 3 into 0.8. So I'm getting the coefficient of friction as 9.5 into 10 to the power of minus 4. 9.5 into 10 to the power of minus 4. Now finally we have power loss. Power loss due to friction is given by F mu into U. F mu is 40.63 into velocity is pi d n by 60. Diameter is 0.5. 0.5 n is 1200 by 60 hence power loss will be 40.63 into pi diameter is 0.05 into n dash is 1200 by 60 it is 127.64 watts 127.64 watts or 0.127 kilowatts or this is equal to 0.127 kilowatts so this is the complete solution for problem number 1 let me pause this video for a while so that you people can copy it down later we will discuss problem number 2 Now moving ahead for problem number two, which states that a full journal bearing has an equal length and diameter of 0.05 meters. The diametrial clearance ratio is 0.001, and the operating viscosity of the lubricant is 0.05 pascal second. If the journal speed is 950 rpm and if the bearing sustains a load of 100 kilo newton, determine eccentricity ratio and thickness of the lubricant. Let us solve this problem. If I move for the data of problem number 2 we have a full journal bearing in which length equal to diameter which is 5 cm the diametrial clearance ratio z is directly given which is 0.001 and the operating viscosity of the lubricant eta in pascal second is specified that is 0.05 pascal second if the journal speed capital n is 950 rpm let me convert let me find out n dash in rps that is 950 by 60 which is 15.83 RPS 15.83 RPS 
and the bearing sustains a load of 100 kN find eccentricity ratio that is attitude epsilon and minimum oil film thickness let us find the position also position of minimum oil film thickness also for this problem so if we move for solution so since attitude is asked for us let us directly go for the graph make use of graph to find the value of attitude once you get know the value of attitude you can find what is the minimum oil film thickness so we have from our data handbook referring to figure 24.10 from figure 24.10 of page 24.14 we have a graph of s versus epsilon that is summerfeld number versus attitude we have s which is eta n dash by p into 1 by z square which will become eta is specified as 0.05 into n dash is 15.83 by bearing pressure is already known to you it is w by ld w is 10 power 5 ld is 0.05 into 0.05 this is bearing pressure this is multiplied by 1 by z square z is 10 power minus 3 whole square z square that is 10 power minus 6 so if i solve i'll get s as that is 0.05 into 15.833 divided by 10 power 5 this is divided by 0.05 square this is again multiplied by 1 by 10 power minus 6 so i'll get the value of summerfeld number or bearing characteristic number as 0.0198 you can approximately take it as 0.02 for the value of s is 0.02 and the value of epsilon from this graph will be we have the graph of summerfeld number s versus epsilon and the curve is like this clear now at s is equal to 0.02 if i move up at s is equal to 0.02 if i move up and intersect the graph and come like this this is 0. 02 at s is equal to 0.02 you move up and intersect the curve and come like this you'll get the value of epsilon as 0.74 therefore from the graph we have calculated the eccentricity ratio or attitude as 0.74 now we can make use of epsilon and find out h minimum we have equation for h minimum which we have derived that is h minimum is equal to c by 2 times 1 minus epsilon this is referring to equation 24.32 page number 24.13 now substitute the values diametrical clearance c can be written as diametrical clearance ratio into diameter correct this is also you know this is equation number for z that is i have used z equation in the previous problem also that is equation number 24.29 
referring to page 24.12 now calculate the values how much will you get c diametrial clearance will be diametrial clearance ratio is 0.001 diameter is 5 cm 0.05 so diametrial clearance is 5 into 10 to the power of minus 5 meters hence minimum film thickness will be how much this divided by 2 times 1 minus 0 0.74 that is 6.5 into 10 to the power of minus 6 meters is the minimum oil film thickness now at what position this minimum oil film thickness arises can be determined by using the graph that is the position of minimum oil film thickness can be computed by position of minimum oil film thickness position of minimum oil film thickness is given by figure 24.11a referring to page 24.30 we have Summerfeld number nearly equal to 0 0.02 and L by D ratio is 1 because length is equal to diameter for us. So from this figure if I obtain the value we have the graph like this S versus phi and we have a curve going like this. So at 0 0.02 if I move up at 0 0.02 intersect it and come like this we will get the value of phi as 28 degrees Twenty-eight degrees. the minimum oil film thickness is 6.5 micron meter at 28 degrees so this is the solution for problem number 2 let me pause this video for a while so that you people can copy it down later we will address the final problem of today's lecture Moving ahead, the problem number 3 states that a full journal bearing operates under a load of 1.75 kN at a speed of 900 rpm. The diameter of journal is 37.5 mm and the length of the bearing is 46.8 mm. The minimum oil film thickness must not be less than 0.009375 mm. Assume diametrial clearance ratio to be 0.001 and the average operating temperature as 135 degrees Celsius. Determine the type of the lubricant and power loss in the bearing by considering the end leakages into account. Let us solve this problem. If I move ahead for problem number 3 and list out the data given, we have a full journal bearing operating under load of 1.75 kilo Newton which is equal to 1750 Newton with a speed n as 900 rpm so therefore n dash will be 900 by 60 which is 15 rps the diameter of the journal is given by 37.5 mm which is nothing but 0 0.0375 meters and the length of the bearing is 46.8 mm 
which is nothing but 0.0468 meters the minimum oil film thickness is specified that is h minimum which is 0.009375 millimeters assume the diametral clearance ratio that is xi the 0.001 which is nothing but 10 power minus 3 average operating temperature T naught is 135 degrees determine the type of oil and power loss by considering end leakage P by considering end leakage. Let us solve this problem. Now he has specified the value of H minimum. So since he has specified the value of H minimum and he is asking us to find the type of oil, type of oil can be determined by using the graph that is 24.2 figure number 24.2 a and 24.2 b and making use of table number 24.1 you know to make use of these things i want viscosity if i clearly observe viscosity is not specified we have a graph relating h minimum with sommerfeld number using sommerfeld number i can determine what is the value of viscosity so therefore directly attack the figure relating H minimum and Summerfield number. Summerfield number contains viscosity. So if I know how much is Summerfield number, I can determine what is the value of viscosity. Using viscosity and operating temperature, I can find what is the type of oil. That is, we have referring to figure 24.12 from figure 24.12 1 2 we have the variable delta versus Summerfield number so delta is given by 2 H minimum by C 2 H minimum by C C is the diametral clearance we know diametral clearance ratio and we know how much is the diameter so product of these two will gives us C right so therefore C will be Z times D. How much is clearance? Z is 10 power minus 3. Diameter is 37.5. 0 0.0375 mm. Is the clearance. So therefore, how much is the value of delta? Delta is 2 into H minimum 0 0.009375 divided by C is 0 0.0375 it is 0 0.5 this does not have unit because it is a ratio of two linear dimensions mm by mm so delta is 0 0.5 so therefore from this graph we have Delta versus Summerfield number. Delta versus Summerfield number and the graph is like this. So at 0 0.5, if I intersect this curve and come down like this and come down like this with delta as 0 0.5, I will get the Summerfield number, yes as 0 0.033 S is 0 0.033 from graph so at 0 0.5 you move horizontally intersect the curve and come down and read the value of Summerfeld number Summerfeld number is turning out to be 0 0.033 this is yes Summerfeld number now we know Summerfeld number given in the same graph as eta n dash by p 
times 1 by z square this is 0 0.033 eta is unknown n dash is 15 p is w by ld w is 1750 divided by l is 0 0.04 Six eight diameter is zero point zero three seven five. This is multiplied by one by ten power minus six. So hence I'll get the value of eta as eta will become two point two into ten power minus three. Two point two into ten power minus three pascal second that is eta is equal to 2.2 millipascal second 2.2 millipascal second we have got the viscosity of the oil now i want to find what is the type of oil so therefore refer figure 2.2 sorry 24.2 b refer figure 24.2 b in which we have the plot like this where we have the operating temperature and the curves and here we have eta in millipascal second at 2.2 at 2.2 millipascal second and the specified operating temperature if I go and intersect I will get the oil as SAE 10 SAE 10 that is operating temperature is 135 degrees Celsius eta is 2.2 millipascal second so therefore type of oil this type of lubricant referring to figure 24.2b type of lubricant is turbine oil SAE 10 with oil number B so that completes the type of oil and viscosity now i want to find pressure sorry power loss by considering friction that is p mu by considering end leakage whenever we want to consider end leakage we want to inc incorporate leakage correction factor so leakage correction factor for load leakage correction factor for friction leakage correction factor for frictional force is specified in a graph in our data handbook so if i look at the leakage correction factor for frictional force because power loss is calculated based on frictional force we have the leakage correction factor for frictional force given by cf correction factor for end leakage for frictional force cf is equal to frictional force divided by frictional force without end leakage it is f mu infinity Whereas frictional force without end leakage is already known for us. Hence, if I determine the value of CF, this is equation 24.54 referring to page 24.29. So this is specified in equation 24.54 referring to page 24.29. Now CF is given by graph wherein which we have CF as we have B by L and CF. This is figure 
24 पेज नंबर 24.27 वेयर बी इज द सर्कमफरेंशियल लेंथ दैट इज पाई डी सो बी इज नथिंग बट पाई डी पाई डी बाई एल सो पाई डी बाई एल इज हाउ मच पाई इंटू डयामीटर इज थर्टी सेवन पॉइंट फाइव लेंथ इज फोर्टी सिक्स पॉइंट एट लेंथ इज फोर्टी सिक्स पॉइंट एट वी गेट टू पॉइंट फाइव टू एंड वी हैव ए कर्व लाइक दिस सो इफ ए मूव एट टू पॉइंट फाइव we have b by l as 2.5 pi d by l is 2.5 intersect and come horizontally we'll get the correction factor as 0.86 we'll get the correction factor as 0.86 so therefore i'll get the equation for f mu is 0.86 times f mu infinity f mu infinity is nothing but frictional force neglecting end leakage that is given by our earlier equation that is equation 24.44 referring to page 24.27 so if i substitute and solve i'll get f mu as 1.514 newtons hence power loss is f mu into u which is turning out to be 2.675 watts so this is the solution for problem number 3 before concluding i want to mention one very important note that is always we want viscosity to find the type of oil or if the type of oil is specified i can find what is the value of viscosity whenever the type of oil is specified to find the value of viscosity or whenever viscosity is specified and to find the type of oil always make use of table 24.1 and figure 24.2a and 24.2b if the operating temperature is not specified always assume the operating temperature as 60 degree celsius assuming operating temperature as 60 degree celsius using table 24.1 and figure 24.2a and 24.2b find out the unknown whenever the bearing temperature and ambient temperature as are specified always make use of equation 24.81 equation 24.81 states that tb minus ta is equal to t not minus tb by 2 equation 24.81 relates ambient temperature operating temperature and bearing surface temperature the correlation between operating temperature bearing surface temperature and ambient temperature is specified in equation 24.81 that is tb minus ta is equal to t not minus tb by 2 where tb is bearing surface temperature ta is ambient temperature and t not is operating temperature that is to so if bearing surface temperature and ambient atmospheric temperature is specified i can find the operating temperature by using the correlation given in equation 24.81 if not assume the operating temperature as 60 degree celsius make use of table 24.1 and figure 24.2a and 24.2b and find the unknown whenever the type of lubricant and the viscosity is related always we should make use of these two figures and the table then only we can find what is the type of lubricant or using the type of lubricant i can find what is the 
viscosity of the oil that's all from this lecture thank you all